Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome to Watches Tonight. We're not Watches Live. That's on Tuesday. Blast from the not-so-distant past. I'm back in the saddle tonight, and I'm grateful for Sequan keeping the seat warm and keeping the channel chatty. Guys, I'm back at the tiller, and this show is a killer. This evening, bad watch sales listing, holiday gift guides for watch gifters, finding me in our video comments below, annual calendars for sub -Patek budgets, X's and Rolexes, why they don't mix, and we can fix that, plus my holiday wish list for the watch world. All of that and viewer wrist shots this evening. I want to emphasize that whether you're looking for the perfect gift or raising money to buy it, the watchbox.com is the finest place to buy, trade, and sell watches 24 hours a day. We are global. We pay cash, we pay fast, we make it fun, we make it easy, and I will pay you for your browsing because this is your last chance to win the F-Series 1661 Zero Rolex Submariner. You got to be in it to win it. Link in the description, and I'm going to pick on the 31st. I'm going to call the contest on January 2nd, so stay tuned. Jumping into batting practice, warming up with your pitches and my cuts. Time to run, where we call BS on the worst watch listings of the web. Viewer Brian G gets us rolling and trolling with a motorcycle theme that isn't what it seems. For 2016, Zenith launched the Heritage Pilot Ton Up. Ton Up meant to signify 100 miles per hour or more. That was cool in the Cafe Racer era, and it was a moto take on pilot's watches. Ariel Adams of a blog to watch reviewed a prototype serial 344537. And now you can own it. Sort of. There's an eBay seller offering a ton up right now, and what do you know? Case back 344537. The exact blog to watch prototype unit. Or, or, and this is a real possibility, these photos are ripoffs from a blog to watch. And this is a $7,100 US retail timepiece being offered on eBay for $3,500. Too good to be true? Nah. Boxes? Papers? Who knows? The seller doesn't say whether they're there or not. Usually you get a heads up that they're missing. Here, no details whatsoever. And the cut and paste description describes the clearly 45 millimeter watch as a 50 millimeter watch. We're off to a bad start. But at least the terms guarantee satisfaction. Oh, my bad. Seller does not accept returns. But at least the seller has an impressive sales history of high-value luxury items. Or does he? Uh, 99 cent wealth management DVDs, what appears to be a nude porcelain mermaid, one of the more expensive items on the list, and not one, but two busted iPods. I trust this dealer with my watch dollars like I trust a meth lab with my prescription medication. And yes, Breaking Bad Winnebago meth lab Lego sets are a thing. Help me name and shame, improve the e-commerce ecosystem via survival of the fittest. Send your time to run bad watch listings to Monday Mail bag at thewatchbox.com. Friends joining from around the world. I can see Yas9991 joining from Ricewick. I can see Kyle K joining, Kevin S joining, Dustin Van Patten shouting out from Tacoma, Washington, Philip McCrate from Northern Ireland. I can see Joe Differ, Jonathan Galt, Hale Bopp, a friend and a customer, Nolan Reed from Atlanta. Welcome Mark S, welcome John Smith, Ray Bonifond, and Zach Blass. Guys, it's good to be back. Let's jump quick into questions, but before we do so headlong, a moment of shameless self-promotion because it's worked so well. I've seen more growth in the last three weeks on my Instagram than I saw in the first eight months of doing the Instagram thing. If you like my watch video reviews, you'll love them delivered to your phone every 24 hours in 60 second snippets. Just enough to duck down and get a watch review in before the office supervisor returns to your cubicle. Help me to divide and conquer the world, Tim underscore Masso on Instagram. Matthew J asks, Tim, do you have any holiday gift guidance for people who plan to give a watch as a gift? Yes, I do, and thank you for asking, Matthew. First, box and papers. Demand them from dealers. I know, I said enough Rolex, and we start with a picture of a Rolex. I can't help myself. Here's the thing. Let me explain. They're worth real money. Part of the value of your watch, and I've seen too many gifted watches, right up to Patek Philippe, that are devalued because the original gift did not include the boxes and the papers, including the warranty card, or because the person giving the watch and the accessory set did not give a coherent explanation to the recipient of why these things are valuable and worth hundreds or even thousands of dollars as part of the total value of the gift. 
Also, and this often happens with holiday gifts, people go on a vacation to a tropical place with low or no taxes. They walk into the duty-free store, buy a monster watch, and walk out without ever asking about warranty papers and boxed accessories. They either don't think to do it or they don't know to do it. And here's an example, concretely. I once had a couple that bought a Patek Philippe 5196P, a nice platinum Calatrava, arguably the platinum Calatrava, at the Henri Stern Boutique afloat on the Queen Mary II. That's one hell of an experience. The problem? <laughs> no boxes, no papers, no problem, right? Big one. Wrong. They wanted to trade it as part of a his and hers transaction to get two watches subsequently, and I had to break the news that a naked Patek is a beat-down pre-owned pawn. So here's the thing. Buyer's cheat sheet. Remember, box and papers. Collect them when you buy the gift. Explain them when you give the gift. Now, jumping to the next piece of advice. If you don't know somebody's wrist guide, or someone's wrist size, and you don't really have a way to estimate with a guide, and you want to save a buck on the purchase of the watch, give a watch on a strap. Instant gratification on the day of the gifting, usually a holiday, usually when jewelers are closed, you can't make that adjustment to the bracelet, but well, unless it's a Cartier uh, Santos, the new Cartier Santos you can. But for everyone else, you can't make that adjustment on the day of the gift. Get a strap, and the person will walk away happy from the open box. Instant gratification. Okay. Third piece of advice, in general, you run a risk blind buying a watch for someone who's into watches and may have truly questionable and particular fashion sense. It's best to just give this person a budget, permission to buy a watch, or some kind of a dealer credit. Let's face it, if this person's a watch nerd, they already know the price of whatever watch you might give them, so there are really no secrets here. Give them the permission or some sort of a credit to go out and buy the watch they really want. Even better, you know, you got the gift you want, and then you let him or her buy the watch that he or she really wants. You go out and you make it a day at the stores, a day at the shops, and you both walk home with something, something you like. Watches make a better blind gift to someone who doesn't have preformed or rigid personal tastes in watches. You give my mom a Pantere de Cartier, she's thrilled. You give me a Pantere de Cartier, I'm probably scratching my head, I'm grateful, but I don't quite get it. Now. Franklin S. asks, Hi Tim, do you respond personally, this is about our channel, to the comments under your watch videos and these broadcast shows? Yes, but not exclusively. We have two posting IDs. One is me, and the other is a collaborative effort by our marketing team. It could be any one of a number of people back at headquarters. But here's the thing. The marketing team will usually sign off as the Watchbox team, and I will sign my responses as Tim. So if it says Tim, that is Tim. No one is posting as me. Also, I generally post as Watchbox Reviews, our other channel, so we don't post using the same login ID, and that makes it a little easier to see which one is me and which is Watchbox team. Finally, I try to read all the comments under my watch videos, but that's a lot of watches and that's a lot of comments. So I read them, but I don't always respond to all of them. I will say that in the 24 to 48 hours after this show, I do try to respond to every comment under the program. So if you're watching this recorded, post away. Good or bad, I will acknowledge you. Giovanni D asks Tim, and by the way, let me acknowledge a few folks in the chat box right here. Uh, I could see Tim Lindbergh saying, get the strap when you buy the watch. Didn't know Tim was gangsta. Naresh Pape saying, wow, a young Tim. Can you believe that was only four years ago? And I could see Bobby Smith saying, oh my God, no sunglasses. These were given to me as a gift by someone who means a lot to me in the company. That's one of the reasons I keep them. Sentimental value and they don't get lost on my head. But I can also see Tim looking like he starred in lock, stock, and two smoking barrels and Hale Bop retracting the message whatever it was, I'll bet it was a classic. Okay, jumping back to Giovanni D. Tim, I fell in love with the annual calendar through exposure to Patek Philippe, 5396, but I don't have a Patek budget. For $10,000 US, what are my options? Okay, the happy news is that you've got a lot of them. That's not one. Zenith, for $5,000 to $5,500 pre-owned, you wanna get the Captain Windsor annual calendar calendar module, all of nine pieces, an ingenious mechanism by Ludwig Oxlin, the genius behind the UN 
Perpetual Ludwig system and the Trilogy of Time. So you're getting a Zenith El Primero base, a Ludwig Oxlin annual calendar system, also seen at UN and Oxen Jr., and you're getting a 42 millimeter steel watch that will last forever. A complication you'll use every day, the annual calendar, and the king of complications in the chronograph. That's probably going to be the next watch I buy myself. Plus, there's an absolutely bewitching smoked Fume dial version, smoked palladium no less. This was a boutique exclusive. That's the one I want. Moser, eat your heart out. And uh, don't take that personally, Moser. I love you, but Zenith aced that thing. Okay, Tag Heuer, MP412C. If that sounds like a now discontinued McLaren supercar, you're on the right track. This was a special edition McLaren themed 1000 piece run in 2011 and 2014. The MP412C was the Tag Heuer Flyback Annual Calendar Chronograph Limited Edition. 43 millimeters, titanium, a handsome combination of carbon and tie, and one of the best modern tags. It uses a DD Annual Calendar Grand Date Flyback Chronograph Mechanism. And believe it or not, this is one of the most counterfeited modern tags. So buy from a reputable seller, but that's absolutely a watch you should be considering for about seven to $8,000. A watch that originally re retailed for 14 grand so you're getting a lot of watch for your money and one of the few tags I would absolutely jump for now Omega you want a mainstream brand and a rock-solid name well here's I love that background by the way guys what did you do with that gif okay <laughs> Omega and you annual calendar Seamaster Aquaterra, because I know this guy Giovanni fell in love with a Patek annual calendar. I'm guessing the 38.5 millimeter version of this watch is the one he's going to like best, but there is a 43 available. 60 hour twin barrel manufacturer coaxial chronometer caliber 8601. This is a mass of watchmaking tech from a brand that will be around forever to service it and robust at 150 meters water resistant automatic winding fully loomed. That is your four season full service surf and turf Seamaster annual calendar. Jumping into the chat box right now, Brick Lane saying that he's a fan of the Zenith, but no one does a dial quite like Moser. Ryan H saying there's so many interesting underrated pieces in the Zenith back catalog. We will explore this on a mono brand show in the future. Stay tuned. And I could see right here, uh, Peter Simmons asking, what am I wearing today? I am wearing my Zin Easy M11. Google Zin Easy M11, and it's spelled Sin. You'll see exactly what's on my wrist. You might even find the video I made of my watch. And finally, right here, I can say, uh, howdy from Texas. In my opinion, these Car Watch Partnership Limited Editions don't do well. I'm going to say that's right, but that particular tag is a classic, which is probably why it's counterfeited and they've issued it twice. Jumping into the next question, Jan R asks, Tim, I need your help. X's and Rolexes, guys, brace yourself. My hated ex-wife, messy divorce, brutal process, gave me my Rolex no-date sub. I love the watch, love the watch, but it reminds me of her too much. I put the watch away for two years in the safe deposit box and only recently pulled the watch back out. It's now or never. I need to unload this thing or dramatically change my perspective. Jan, I can help. Here's what you need to do. First, back off from the mouse, get off of Chrono. Even if you're on our website, don't sell that watch. I'm gonna help you. This watch needs a change of scenery, and so do you. Experiences generally define how we regard our watches, and you've had a bad one with this sub, but you love the watch. So break new ground with your old flame. This diver should be used as Rolex intended. Go wreck diving. Book a group, go wreck diving. That will build a powerful new association that's likely going to be the dominant memory that you link to this watch. But that's not your only option. For added value, I would say go out and get a certification and then go wreck diving as part of a tropical vacation. Go to warm climbs where you can skin dive on wrecks with nothing but your breath and a weight. Go out and, and make it a true experience holistically. The certification, the training, the wreck, and the vacation. Plan an epic road trip. Even if you're not going to cannonball it, there are plenty of ways to make new memories on the road. Do this with a buddy or a favorite family member, either your favorite cousin or your brother. Don't do it with a wife or girlfriend because we know how that can end up. Do it with a forever friend, a soulmate. And pick a major destination like the Rolex 24 hour at Daytona, the sports car endurance race in January, or if you're in Europe, the 24 hours of Le Mans. Go to a major sporting event. If you're in New York, go to a Yankees game. If you're in Manchester, 
do I really need to explain? You see where I'm going with this. Now, here's the other thing. Take a road trip of a different kind, a pilgrimage to something like Mardi Gras. Are you loving the reference right there? <laughs> Two watches or four. Above all, pick something that's meaningful to you. This might be a photography exhibition. It might be a Broadway play, but build new memories about this watch. In time, these major experiences will help you to reframe your memories of the sub and create a whole new mental modality around this machine. For good measure, change the scenery and change the look as you change your outlook with something like an Everest strap or a rubber B for your no-date sub. That'll really change the way you look at the watch, mentally and physically. Okay, your mental DVR needs a rewrite, but time and miles will do the deed. I can see Thomas Burnett in the chat box saying, go wreck diving. Steve Bowden giving me a shout out and Jared Packer saying, do it in something fast if you're gonna take that road trip man after my own heart. I'm always looking for my next car. I've found a way to moderate my appetite for watches, but cars will ruin me. They are my lodestone rock in the tale of two cities sense. Okay, viewer wrist chats. Let's get started. Ian C. of Singapore, a customer and a client, shares his Royal Oak Dual Time from Watchbox. Thank you, Ian, and thank you for trusting Josh, Jason, and our entire crew who are involved. Paul M., from the UK composes a shot of his Omega Moonwatch. I'm a sucker for a speedy on a strap, and that one is a killer. Ryan M. sports a Zenith Pilot Big Date El Primero. El Primero Power and Green NATO Strap. Are you digging that telemeter? Zenith aced that one. Plus, solid blocks of loom for those numerals. And Matthew strikes a pose in the waters off Costa Rica with his Breitling Super Ocean, the world's most underrated Rolex Sea Dweller alternative. Guys, send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com to see your analog on my digital. Okay, now, moving along to our primary feature. This is where the action is, guys. Tim's 2018 watch wish list for the holidays. No, I can't top Steve Martin's holiday wish. And if you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, open a new window, keep me streaming. I'm not gonna try to challenge the master, although, as a sidebar, what's with the Bill Murray worship and why doesn't Steve get that? The jerk over Caddyshack 10 times out of 10. All right, now, my holiday wish list. First item, that is a classic though, they're both great. <laughs> my first holiday wish, stop the Ublo hate, please. Stop the Ublo hate. Ublo is laughing at you if you're the guy on the watch forum getting upset over this outlandish brand. Ragging on Ublo for its lack of subtlety is like trying to teach a dog calculus and then getting irate and flying off the handle when the student drools, spins three times, and goes to sleep. Dogs are fun, not smart, and so is Ublo. That's the mindset you have to bring to this. If you're not into the brand, tolerate it. I like to say, live and let live. All watches are frivolous to each his own fun. Live it, love it. My second, by the way, they make some great movements too. Ublo deserves credit for watchmaking. I've said it before, I'll say it again. My second holiday wish list is for Swatch, the world's largest pure watch conglomerate. To actually spend some money promoting Glasuta Original, does Swatch even remember that it bought Geo back in 2000? I'm not sure. They don't play up their most interesting brand. And here's the deal. In terms of product and scope, Geo is like a German JLC with its huge range of manufacturer competence and endless variety. It has a manufacturer, it has a tool factory, it has a dial factory, it has a watchmaking school, it has a tool making school, it has its own museum, and it is the true an ancestor. It is the unbroken continuity. It is the modern Alanga Unzona. If you draw a line from the original 1845 Ferdinand Adolf Langa to a current company still in existence, it's Geo, not Langa. So this is a great company. The world's best alarm watch comes from Geo, not JLC. The Senator Diary, a 31-day calendar, set the day and the time you want to be reminded. That's the best alarm you can buy, and it doesn't hail from the Valet de Jeu. Plus, the world's best value in steel sports chronographs doesn't come from Rolex. It's the vintage 70s chronograph Panorama Datum. Again, open a new window, keep me streaming. Geo, where are you? Swatch. Throw your own folks a life preserver, please. My third holiday wish is less feuding in the YouTube watch community space. The Atomic Cannon. That actually happened. 
But frankly, I don't know how this even became a thing. Not the A-gun. Watch feuding. On YouTube, aren't we all interested in the same obscure stuff? You'd think that all the channel owners in this community would be best friends, but it seems like it's almost the opposite, and it's weird. I'm happy to say that any other channel operators who reach out to me will get a response. Literally anyone. Archie Luxury once reached out to me about a collaboration, and I sent a response to the effect of, Okay, but what did you have in mind? That's a pretty strong character you created. He never got back to me, but I responded, and if he ever got back to me, I would respond again. Ultimately, I can't agree to every proposed collaboration because I don't own this channel. I don't own this house. My name is not Govberg. I'm here by their good graces. I will say this, though. I will always respond and keep the lines of communication open, and I will absolutely hang with you, your place or mine, or events like Basel and SIHH. And for that matter, we need people across all watch media in general to be open and approachable. That's my holiday wish. Okay, my fourth holiday wish is for Basel World and SIHH to survive as customer-centric experiences for the buyer, not the retailer. I get it. In case you missed, Basel World is dying, and it will be a shell of itself in 2019 as Swatch leads an exodus of exhibitors. The watch and jewelry show needs to reinvent itself before it's too late, and too late is just over 12 months from now. Here's the thing, the show itself has been dying for years, and SIHH, which seemed to be on the rise, is now scheduled to lose AP and Richard Mille in 2019, so even it's not safe. Like many brands with marquee names, AP and RM will be holding individual customer showings around the world. The original purpose of the trade show was for watch dealers and watch makers to get together in one Swiss city and they would do all of their business for the year. The dealers would order all of their watches for the year after seeing all the new models and the manufacturers would know what their allocation was going to be and they'd know roughly how many to make. Obviously, physically going to Switzerland to see the new watches is no longer necessary. I did my Basel World coverage from the studio last year and I don't feel like I missed out on anything. But here's the deal. The shows are fun. And that deserves to be preserved, not for the sake of the dealers who are jaded and over it, but for the guys who are into it like you and me. And there's a solution. As with all things Tim Masso, it starts with cars. SIHH has never come close to filling the full Pell Expo Center where they do the show. You know what does? The Geneva Motor Show. That's what does. Porsche. You and your colors, I love you. These are still relevant because global auto shows bring in millions of buyers and customers each year. Dealer days are only a small segment of the auto shows. While all isn't perfect in the world of auto shows, some are on the rise while some are falling by the wayside. The public experience model that still succeeds there is one that should be front and center for Basel and SIHH. Brands ultimately, including Swatch, will go where the buyers are, and the watch market is far smaller than the auto market. One big Swiss show bringing everyone together is enough per year. It's not hard to imagine tour packages being built around a customer-focused Swiss watch show. For some brands, these could be the direct customer opportunities to sell extreme priced models that they can't afford to inventory, and it could give them an alternative to brand boutiques with expensive leases where crickets chirp all day and they're lucky to get more than two customers in a week. This is the solution. Plus, for average Joes, the trip might be the only way for guys from Albuquerque, New Mexico, or Lisbon, Portugal, to try on a minute repeater in a non-prejudicial, no-pressure environment. If you want to throw on that minute repeater, it might be intimidating to walk into a boutique, but the minute repeater guy is going to be able to see it without any pressure or getting the up-and-down look as someone tries to assess his financial means if it happens at Basel World. That's my solution. My point is that these trade shows can and should survive. They're still fun, they're still interesting. It's not 1978 anymore, so the business to business elements are gonna be a small part of this, like they are with the auto shows. But there's a cool once a year watch-centric Disneyland waiting to happen if the principals involved can get together before it's too late. I can see Grand Seiko, uh, Brick Lane is saying in our chat box, Grand Seiko is like the Lexus LFA. I could not agree more. And I could see Howdy from Texas saying, best of luck, thank you, watch guys, in the year 2019. Ahmad B saying he's a big fan of the AP15400 Royal Oak Black Dial. It's on his wish list. And I can see Thomas Burnett saying, I never made it to the watch show, but would surely like to. My fifth holiday wish is for mainstream watch collectors to discover watches not called Rolex and Patek Philippe. 
enough with the Rolex and Patek Philippe guys. They're great, but no one needs to sing their praises. What do you need? Well, you need something special, rare, and something that watch guys who do the secret handshake will understand in terms other than dollars and cents. So, the MIH watch. You can buy a piece of independent horology from legends like Christian Gaffner, industrial design, Ludwig Oxlin, concept and mechanism, and Paul Gerber, actual watchmaking and assembly. Who's Gerber? He's a co-founder of the AHCI, an organization that includes names like Voodelainen, like Jorn and Dufour, and many others who also deserve mention. Who's Christian Gaffner? Industrial design master. In the same sense that Dufour masters watchmaking, Gaffner is an industrial design museum quality master and maestro. Who is Ludwig Oxlin? We already introduced him. He's the guy behind that Zenith annual calendar, Ox und Junior, and the Trilogy of Time from UN. You can own this watch for five to seven thousand dollars. It's an annual calendar. It's a chronograph. It's automatic. It's 42 millimeters in titanium. It's an industrial design museum exhibit on your wrist. 100 meters water resistance so you can wear it full time and the coolest watch with no evident branding. It fits great on a small wrist too and I can attest to that. That also might be the next watch I buy myself. And it should be mentioned that if you're a baller and you have big watch money, you can buy an IWC minute repeater for less than the cost of a used Patek Philippe Nautilus. How much less? Well, considering those used Nautilus 5711s in steel are going for about $50,000 right now, you can get that watch for $32,000 in yellow gold. That is a Portugueser, an IWC, and the Minute Repeater module was built, designed, I should say, by a pre Audemars Piguet Renault et Papy for IWC. You're getting an absolute tour of Switzerland's finest in a single 42 millimeter case, and you're getting all of it for 15 grand less than a used Nautilus. Totally cool. That would be my choice for Nautilus money. And while high profile auctions, by the way, you'll get stunning watchmaking in that Portugueser. It's as interesting on the case back as it is on the dial side. Bring a loop. But while high profile auctions, let's talk some vintage, high profile auctions continue to suck all the remaining fun out of vintage Rolex, Omega, Patek Philippe, and even Hoyer. Remember dudes, you can still land awesome vintage JLCs for well under 10 grand. Can we go full screen with that? That's the only JLC I still own because it was by far the most charming of my collection. All the way to the right, black E877, I own that model, it ain't going nowhere. You can still buy these for under $10,000. When people are spending 50, 100, $250,000 for watches from the 70s, that's my choice. Or 1990s Zenith, these are now vintage watches. The Rainbow, the Rainbow Flyback Pilots watches, late DeLucas, all El Primero powered. These are fantastic watches for less than $4,000, certainly less than 5,000 US. You can buy the ultimate Rolex Daytona alternative with the same engine from the 1990s Rolex Daytona. You can buy a whole collection of these for the $12,400 retail price of a steel current generation Rolex Daytona. And I do love vintage Breitling, but unfortunately auctions have discovered the 2005 Super Ocean Slow Chronographs, the 806 Navitimers, and the 809 Cosmonauts. They've already wrecked that fun for us, but they have not discovered the Felsa powered 1950s 261 unit times. That, if we can go full screen, would be my choice in current bargain vintage Breitling. That's a watch to own, and it's Felsa powered. Any watchmaker can work on it, and it beats the pants off a million dollar Patek Philippe 2523 world timer from the same period. You know, you can pay 4,000 or you can pay, you know, a million and a half. What's the difference? Considerable. I would take the Breitling 10 times out of 10 for the charm and the character and the lack of pretense. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Above all, my wish for 2019 is that we all wear our watches in great times, great health and fraternity across the watch collector spectrum. Across the web, from my family to yours, the watch that may be the greatest watch for you and the best for your collection is probably the one that's on your wrist now. Let's appreciate what we've got and make the most of it in the new year. That said, I hope all of your Grail watch dreams come true. 
viewer wrist shots. Let's start with Jonathan C., who takes us to infinity and beyond with his Rolex Pepsi GMT. Latest generation Jubilee. You can see quite literally to infinity and beyond. That's one of our watches and wheels shots with his infinity. Tim H. from Key West rocks his Patek Calatrava Pilot Travel Time 5524G, but from Key West, he's framing the Manhattan skyline from the top of the Empire State Building from one Tim to another. Great shot. Robert W. keeps our cityscapes theme rolling along with his epic Offshore 44 at Greenwich, and Kenneth M. takes us home, down home to Wyoming, USA, with an old American brand, Hamilton, on a NATO strap. Guys, send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com to see your pieces on my pixels enter to win our rolex submariner link in the description i'm drawing on the 31st i'm calling the winner on january 2nd and of course join me on instagram and comment in the videos below time out tim out for the last time this year and thanks for logging on